I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Fifty years ago today, in 1963, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. addressed the nation at the March on Washington, declaring a dream he longed to be true for America. Charles Chestnut was among those in the crowd that day. Chestnut is a former Alachua County Commissioner and was the first African-American school board member in Gainesville. Chestnut was just 23 when he went to Washington, D.C., along with a group of civil rights activists from Gainesville. They went with a shared hope of being a part of history. The expectation there uh, was just to be a part of the numbers that would send a message to government uh, that we really weren't playing, uh, that it was just not a small group of people. You know, these were people from across these United States uh, who were there and present from that. I, I doubt if there was one state uh, that there were not individuals there from. Chestnut recalls what it was like to be a part of a crowd of over 200,000, joined together under the name of justice and civil rights. The crowd actually went from um, Lincoln Monument all the way down uh, th through that whole area in there, down to where the platform or stage was set up uh, for the speakers. I guess I was probably about a half of a football field away. Uh, it, you, at that point, my vision was good. Chestnut says after years of being forced to go through the back door of Gainesville businesses, it was time to take the issue of inequality to the front door of Congress. There was nowhere in this town at that time that I could go to any restaurant. I couldn't even go to the lunch counter at Woolworth or at McCrory's Tension Store. <laughs> if I went to a restaurant or something, I had to go to the back door to order something. And basically, the restaurants and stuff that were up on 13th Street, I had to go to the back door. Chestnut believes the March on Washington woke up America. He says the catalyst of change started with King's speech. He had a, our undivided attention, you know, at that particular point in time. And uh, I guess uh, as he got into the speech, uh, it, was, it was a good, kind of like a good church, amen, amen, you know, uh, th those uh, kinds of things. And applause off and on um, in terms of when he was speaking. And I, 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 I think the, the, the real crowning blow was when he got to um, I Have a Dream. Just as I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. The dream was to gain equality for minorities, but Chestnut says support was embraced by many nationalities and ethnicities. Well, there were whites uh, there, that, that was for sure. They, there were some, uh, particularly from the Jewish community, uh, that was on stage with King and the rest of the dignitaries, you know, at that time. But, oh, I mean, there were, uh, there were 250,000 people there, and I got to know at least 25,000, 35,000 of them were white. So it, it, it was a multiracial kind of thing. However, some individuals and groups referred to the March on Washington as acts of terrorism and violence. Chestnut says just the opposite was true. It was nonviolent. So there were no, there were no terrorist acts or no even thought of, of any kind of terrorist act or anything going. Uh, if, there, if there was going to be any kind of confrontation, that would have been with the White Citizens Council or the Ku Klux Klan. August 28, 1963, changed Chestnut's life. He says that day taught him what it looked like to dream. To continue making some progress, uh, we've got to catch back a hold of that dream. We've got to keep dreaming. Half a century later, Dr. King's dream remains vibrant, pertinent, and very much alive. For WUFT News, 
I'm Leah Harding.